Welcome to Palm Sunday Worship at Murray Hills Christian Church. For those of you that are already part of this community, we miss seeing you here. For visitors to our service, we look forward to meeting you one day. For communion today, take a moment to find something to eat and drink. You may want to have your Bible nearby and a candle lit. 
but be assured that as we worship together, wherever we are, just as we are, the word of God is close by, and the light of Christ is all around us. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Let us pray. God of our lives, we worship with songs of praise, and we worship with words of prayer, and with ears that listen for you to speak your truth into our lives. We worship in the silent spaces, where we struggle for hope and for courage. Awaken us to your presence knit into the ordinary. Reveal to us what is possible, but not yet present. Heal us, that we might be healers. Reconcile us to you and to ourselves, that our lives might be reconciling. In our simple and sometimes crazy, consistently uncertain lives, speak to us, God, of hope, which is our anchor, of your peace, which is our rock, and of your grace, which is our refuge. God, interrupt us with news that is good, with hope that holds, and with truth that transforms us as we journey through these uncertain roads that we're on. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this time, even when we are separated from one another, we still remember our common calling. God calls us to love and serve others with all our hearts and minds. God calls us to use our gifts of love in all the ways we can. God calls us to use our skills and abilities, our gifts and graces in service to a frightened and heartbroken world. Let us consider the gifts we can offer, even now, as we listen to Bobby Goldsby sing. Mm -hmm. you 
Let us pray. Generous God, through your son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us what it is to truly love others. You call us to follow your example, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for calling us to be generous too. We stand at the foot of the cross to offer you our love and our lives. We stand at the foot of the cross knowing that only here do we stand on level and solid ground. We pray that you will give us open hearts and open hands. We ask you to accept any gift we return to you for love of you. We ask you to bless every gift we share for the love of your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bring before you the communion elements that you gathered at the beginning of worship. And we remember that whenever we gather, whether we are gathered here in body or we are gathered in spirit around this table, we remember the one who came and the one who called us and the one who continues to call to us. Christ, who came for the world, calls all of us to gather around this table in whatever, whatever fashion the table looks like today or any other day. At this table and on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and when he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and he gave it to them. And he said, this is the cup, the blood of the new covenant. It is my promise to you that I am with you even now in troubling and uncertain times, and I am with you always, even unto the close of the age. As often as you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One, you invited your disciples to join you in the Garden of Gethsemane. You asked them to stay awake with you through a sorrowful night. We know that the apostles failed you. You call us to follow you all the way through a long Lenten season. You invite us to stand with you, to be present with you. And we know how often we have failed you. And yet, even now, even now you prepare a table for us. You give to us your cup of forgiveness and it is overflowing. You give to us the bread of life and it is your life given for all people. What would we do without your love? What can we be but grateful? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have come to the final Sunday in Lent, and it is Palm Sunday, and most churches around the country and the world are celebrating palms. But we celebrated Palm Sunday, that first Sunday in Lent, way back in February. Since then, we have been with Jesus in the temple as he tried to get the people to understand who he was, tried to get them to understand his message about God and God's kingdom. And we have been with Jesus as he ate with his disciples, trying to get them to see how close the end was. Now this morning we find ourselves at the beginning of the end. 
After Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples, they head out into the night towards Mount Olive and Bethany, Mount of Olives and Bethany to sleep for the night. They head down a path that they have walked many, many times before. I wonder if that walk felt different to the disciples this night after that odd Passover meal. I wonder what they did. I can see them walking along the path. They would have been slightly drunk from all of that Passover wine that they had shared. I wonder if they continued that argument they were having about who was the best disciple. Possibly still in a light-hearted spirit when Jesus stops in the garden and everything changes. I wonder if Jesus had stopped to pray in previous walks. We know that the disciples didn't know this was the end. They expected to wake up the next morning and head back into the temple for more of the Passover festival. But instead, everything changed. In our Lenten book, Entering the Passion of Jesus, Amy Jill Levine writes and tells us that in each of the gospel accounts, this moment happens differently. And we shouldn't see that as a contradiction. Instead, we should see the different views and the different things as adding layers to our understanding. And so this morning, we're going to be hearing pieces from both the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Mark just to give us a few different layers and maybe deepen our understanding of what's happening. We'll start with Luke 22, 39 through 46. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you might not come to the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Here in the Gospel of Luke, we see Jesus praying alone on his knees with the disciples a stone's throw away. In the Gospel of Mark, the picture is a little bit different. Mark 14, 32 through 36. They went to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he withdrew himself on the ground, he threw himself on the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. I find the imagery in these passages pretty intense. In the Gospel of Luke, Mark, Jesus prays so hard that he actually sweats blood. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus shares that his distress is so much that he is grieved almost to death, and he throws himself on the ground in prayer. Can you imagine the amount of emotion that Jesus must have been holding on to and been experiencing to actually sweat blood? 
And have you ever felt such intense grief that it felt like death was just there right with you? Jesus' emotions in this moment are raw. His prayer is visceral. Jesus knows what's about to happen, and he doesn't want it to. He doesn't want to die. He wants a different option. And so he prays and he pleads with God, not wanting to go down the path that he sees before him, the path that he knows leads to suffering and death. Now these last few weeks have been quite emotional ones. Our lives have changed drastically and we don't know what's coming down the road. We sense that there may be sorrow and pain and death. And I know that my prayers have become much more emotional, much more raw as I pray through this current situation that we're in. So maybe that's why as I read the gospel accounts, I really found myself drawn to the emotion that Jesus might have been feeling as he prayed. Fear. Jesus knew that the path that he was taking was going to lead to suffering. It was going to lead to death. Loneliness. At this point in his ministry, Jesus knew he had to move ahead alone. He would no longer have his disciples and his friends surrounding him. And maybe he even felt a sense of failure. He hadn't succeeded in getting people to change, and he hadn't succeeded in getting people to understand his message about the kingdom of God. It is filled with these intense emotions that Jesus prayed. And he prayed for himself. He prayed because he wanted God to give him a different outcome than the one that he knew was coming. Have you ever found yourself in that garden moment, that situation, similar to maybe what Jesus was experiencing? Have you found yourself facing a situation that you knew was going to be painful? A situation you knew was going to be lonely and isolating? If you faced a time of serious doubt looking ahead, a time when you couldn't see a way forward without extreme sorrow. A time that you really wanted God to provide a way out, a different outcome. When we find ourselves having these moments, we can turn to Jesus' moment here in the garden. And we can find comfort knowing that Jesus understands what we're going through. Jesus faced a lonesome, painful journey. And in that, he shows us that it's okay to cry out to God. It's okay to plead, to bear our emotions. It's okay to ask for another way out, another option. Even knowing, as Jesus knew, that there is no other way. Sometimes, we just have to walk through those lonesome, painful, sorrowful places. Now, I love that in the Gospel of Luke, we hear that an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. During this time of emotional prayer, Jesus was not alone. There was an angel, a presence with him that gave him strength. Strength to move forward through his fear, Strength to move forward knowing that he was not alone. God was present. Whenever we find ourselves having a garden moment, maybe we too can draw on that knowledge that God is with us in every challenging, in every painful, in every isolating, and every sorrowful moment, offering us a presence of strength. I also notice in, this, in both of these passages that even as Jesus is praying and pleading with God his own personal prayer, he still shows great concern for his disciples. 
In both the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Mark, Jesus repeatedly tells the disciples to pray so that they will not come into a time of trial. Because Jesus knows what's going to happen. He knows he's going to suffer, and he knows he's going to die. And he doesn't want his disciples to suffer. He doesn't want his disciples to die. He wants them to live, and he wants them to be strong, and to be able to move forward in their life, and to move forward in God's ministry without him physically present with them. And so he asks them, too, to pray for strength. It is after this emotional prayer that we hear Jesus release his human desires, and he moves forward on the path set before him. Jesus calmly allows himself to be turned over to the priests and then to the Romans. Jesus is crucified, and he dies. His disciples watch every moment, scared, not knowing what's going to happen to them, lonely. They no longer had their friend, their teacher with them. And they believed that with Jesus' death, everything ended. But we know differently. As we journey through these last moments with Jesus, we know that the resurrection is coming. So we are able to look forward with a different kind of hope. And as we journey together in this time of uncertainty, this time of unknowns, a time where many will face pain and death, we can return to this garden moment that Jesus has with God. And we can know that it's okay to pray and plead with God for a different outcome. And we can find strength in knowing that God's presence is with us, like Jesus did with the presence of the angel in the garden. We can also look at Jesus' example as we are worried and concerned and praying for ourselves to also have concern for those around us, for strength and comfort. And we can look forward with hope to a time of resurrection that we are certain will come. Pray with me. God of the journey, you are with us in times of grief and despair. You are with us in times of hopelessness and fear. God of the journey, you provide us with comfort when we are weary and when we are isolated. God of the journey, you shine light in the darkness, and we pray for that light. God of the journey, we lean into your love and faithfulness in the midst of the uncertainty and the chaos. We look to you with hope, and we anticipate the time when we see that hope manifested in new life, in resurrection. Amen. Take time now to, prayer, to pray for our people. We pray for Dorothy Wilson, who has moved to rehab from the hospital. We pray for the Fleming family on the loss of Mary Sue. We continue to pray for the Vance family on the loss of Bonnie's mother. We pray for Larry Menegan and Judy and her son Jeff in Hawaii. We pray for Ron who is home from the hospital. We 
pray for the residents and staff at Maryville and for so many other residents and staff in our senior centers and our skilled nursing and rehab centers. We pray for Diane who's in hospice in California and whose family is unable to travel to be with her. pray for those who continue to answer the call to serve for medical and health care workers for our first responders janitors caregivers grocery store clerks food pantry and other volunteers of all kinds Pray for the political leaders of our communities, our states, and for all nations, that they may lay down rancor and division, that they may work together for the common good. We pray that truth may prevail over distortion, that wisdom will triumph over recklessness, that the concerns, the worries, the cries of every person be heard. We pray for the afflicted that they may be healed, for those who sorrow that they may be comforted. We pray for all those who serve that they may be strengthened. God, you are the source of all truth and wisdom. We thank you for the love you have shown us through the gift of your son, Jesus, the one who chose the way of the cross in the garden of Gethsemane. We pray that you will send your spirit among us that we too will turn away from self-interest and turn instead toward you, knowing that your healing love will flow through us and out to others. God, we bring all of these prayers of your people here and everywhere before you today. We lay them down before you, believing and trusting that you have always been, are now, and will always be faithful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Will you join me in singing the Amazing Grace? Here we go. that mostly we spend time waving at each other uh, besides the other things we're trying to do. So please join us if you need help getting on to Zoom, then give us a call or let us know that we need to help you and we'll try to get you there. Let us end in prayer. We live sustained by God's presence and God's love as we walk through this final week of Lent, Jesus' last week alive on the, with, with his disciples and with others. As we are filled with intense and varied emotions, remember that we do not walk alone. We walk together 
We walk reassured by the knowledge that we are sustained by God's presence and God's love. Amen. Thank you.